this lesson, we're going to take a look at editor settings. In the editor, hit the right touchpad and scroll down to settings and then select editor settings. Or you can hit the down arrow on the D-pad to open the radio menu and use the right stick to navigate to editor settings. In here, we have a lot of useful options. So let's run through the list. First, we have the editor map on and off. This will toggle the map in the upper right hand corner of the screen on or off. Cursor sensitivity adjusts how quickly the cursor moves. Set it to a high number and the cursor will fly around really fast or turn it down to make the cursor go really slow. Next is rotate degrees. With this option, you can set how many degrees an object will rotate when hitting the left shoulder button. The next few options have to do with snapping. In the basic objects tutorial, we learned that you could snap objects to the driveline using R3. Using these options will change how that snapping works. By selecting X, Y, and Z, or any combination of the three, the editor will now use the work plane to determine where to snap objects. If you want to use an object you've already placed for the base of your snapping, select the snap work plane option to select a target. Or you could just point your cursor at the object and click R3. Once you pick your object, the game will place the grid down based on the position and rotation of the object you selected. Now, the editor will snap objects to this grid when you click R3. Keep in mind, the grid is not attached to the target object. So if you move the grid, all future objects snapped to the grid will align with the grid's new position. The next snapping option is Snap Distance. When using custom snap settings, this will determine the intervals that the object snapped to. The default setting is 1 meter, so each square on the grid represents 1 meter. Whenever you snap objects to the grid, they will snap to the line that is closest to the object. Keep in mind, whichever axes you have selected will determine where your object snap to. Our next option is driving line opacity. Here you can turn up or down this number to adjust the transparency of the driveline. Whatever your setting is here, you will never see the driveline when you ride your track. Next is invert Y. Set this if you want to have the Y controller axis reversed, like airplane controls. Next is Adaptive Brightness. Checking this option will enable automatic brightness correction while you're editing. Next we have Focus Camera. Selecting this option will ensure the camera keeps the selected object in view even when you move it off screen. If you have an object selected with Focus Camera turned off, you can hold the left shoulder button, the multi-select tool, and move around with the camera without deselecting the object you are holding. Next is Button Info Visible. This toggles the button info at the bottom of the screen on and off in the editor. Rider Path is next. This is a visual path drawn as your rider moves through the track, showing you where the rider is at any given point. This should be used in short distances, but it's good for seeing where the rider will land after big jumps. Each run redraws the path, and once again, even if this option is turned on, it will never show up in your shared track. Enable Game Camera Effects Visualization will display the visual effects you selected in the game camera while you edit. Like glitching, unchecking this box will turn off the effect, but only while you edit. The effect will still be visible when you share your track. Next is Keep Camera Position. With this box checked, the camera will stay where you are currently when you pause testing and return to editing your track. Unchecking this box will return the camera to the view you had when you selected Test Track. Next is Show Fake Bikes. This toggles the ghost bikes on the other lanes when you test drive your Supercross, Dual Cross, or X Supercross tracks. There are two more options I want to show you. Let's start by testing our track and hitting the pause menu. The first option I want to talk about is Show Editor Icons. Enabling this will show the icons you normally would not see when riding, like glue paths, triggers, events, effects, and other icons. This can help you when testing when you've created something like an impulse chain that's not working properly. With this option enabled, you can see what is happening while you ride your track. Keep in mind, these icons will never show up in a shared track, so no need to worry if you left this option enabled and uploaded your track. The last option we're going to talk about is extra buttons. This disables the ability to skip between checkpoints with the shoulder buttons while you test your tracks. And once again, this will not affect your uploaded track. 